any of my colleagues. First of all, thank you, Helen, uh, uh, Mrs. Harris. I, we really appreciate your time. Uh, won't try to waste it. Um, and I'd like to get this started as quickly as possible. So I'm going to mute myself. If, as it stands right now, there's not many people on. So um, counselors, um, or better yet, maybe maybe we could just allow for um, um, the commissioner to give us an overview, and then you guys can ask your questions if that's appropriate. Sounds good, Mr. Chairman. So well, thank you, thank you very much for the opportunity to give you um, additional information about COVID and our internal vaccine distribution uh, update. Um, as you know, you have probably looked at the guidance and seen the various phases of vaccine distribution. And so you know that uh, December through February, we're uh, going to five priority groups. Those are clinical, non-clinical healthcare workers, long-term care facilities, police, fire, emergency medical services, congregate care uh, settings, including corrections and shelters, home-based healthcare workers, and healthcare workers doing a non-COVID facing care. So that is phase one. That is currently where the Commonwealth is uh, as far as vaccine distribution is concerned. Uh, the Board of Health or the Department of Health and Human Services role in phase one will be to vaccinate our first responders. And so we are uh, obviously on um, uh, calls, webinars, um, getting education, uh, making sure that we're sufficiently staffed to be able to do this. We will uh, be working with AMR as one of our um, subcontractees around vaccine distribution uh, for first responders, if that's necessary. Right now, the police commissioner says that about 70% of her sworn officers are, I'm sorry, yes, 70% of her sworn officers are wanting to take the vaccine at this point. That's 275 of her officers and 35 um, of her civilian staff is willing to take the vaccine. Firefighters are 120 uh, plus 12 dispatch who are in line to take the vaccine. So we're gearing up hopefully when we get through the first phase of phase one to be able to uh, work with them. As all of you know, um, phase one, it goes by um, category. And so the first is the clinical uh, individuals who are doing uh, direct and COVID facing care. Then they'll move to long-term care facilities and then police, fire and EMS uh, will be third, congregate shelters will be fourth, and then um, home-based workers and then healthcare workers doing non-COVID facing care. Uh, phase two, uh, which is in February through March, is uh, individuals with two or more comor comorbidities, you know, comorbidities, high blood pressure, diabetes, cardio cardiovascular disease is uh, something that will be um, considered as uh, decisions are made about that. As decisions are made about that, I'm sorry. Um, and so phase two is comorbidities and then early education, teachers, K through 12, adults 65 or over, and then individuals with one comorbidity condition. And then phase three is starting in April, 2021, or before hopefully will be the um, public, the general public that we will be uh, working with and vaccinating. So. Um, right now, internally for the city, we're in the process of setting up a uh, vaccine um, a committee that's going to help us or a task force that's going to help us that is trusted voices that we will be working with in order to get uh, the um, accurate information out. There is a lot of vaccine resistance. There's a lot of vaccine hesitancy. Um, and so we want to make sure that we are um, getting information that is credible and concrete. Many people are giving information about the vaccine. Some of it's correct, some of it's not. So we want to make sure that we are um, giving information to our residents. I do have the names of some of the task force members if you'd like that, but I'll stop there and, and ask if there's any questions about what I've said. Mr. Chairman. 
Sorry, gentlemen. Uh, Council Letterman. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair and Commissioner. Thanks for being with us for all of your uh, incredible work throughout the pandemic and to your team as well. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about um, our actual uh, distribution strategy. And I, I do want to know the members of the, uh, the task force you're putting together. But uh, what I'm curious about is in terms of distribution, are we envisioning uh, setting up sites similar to how we've done with testing through AMR, which I think has uh, been very, has been a, a good model, um, or are you, or rather, are you thinking that you're going to see this distributed through uh, private providers or pharmacies? What, what are your thoughts on, on how that will move forward? Well, I think, Councillor Letterman, thank you for that question. It's a good one. Um, I think we're going to use um, all of our resources. There will be distribution through um, CVS as well as Walmart. Uh, the city, we have uh, a plan that uh, is a continuity of operations plan and emergency dispensing site plan. So that's what we've used in the past, our emergency dispensing site plans. We usually in the past have used uh, central uh, but we have identified throughout the city about five sites that we can put in operation should we need to uh, to do that. Uh, so uh, all of the strategies that you mentioned will be things that we'll, we're going to consider using. We do not have a concrete because we don't know exactly when the uh, vaccine is coming. I should say that the state tells us to expect Moderna as the vaccine that's going to be distributed uh, because they believe there's going to be uh, more um, uh, ability to get that uh, in a timely way. You know that Pfizer, uh, Massachusetts did not get 20% of its vaccine um, distribution that was, uh, was anticipated. And so uh, once we uh, have the vaccine, we certainly will be able to uh, gear up quickly uh, we are have trained for that as a department, and of course, Walgreens and uh, CVS will be doing the long-term care facilities in Massachusetts. We will be working with AMR. The only challenge around using our EDS as an emergency dispensing site is that we'll have people indoors, and ideally, we'd like to do this uh, vaccinations uh, in a place where uh, people um, you know, uh, can feel comfortable and many people feel comfortable outdoors, but most of it's being done in indoor settings. So I think we'll be fine. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I might, Commissioner, I guess I'm just curious if we're using sort of multiple points of distribution, how, uh, how we're gonna, uh, I know it requires two doses. And so I guess what I'm curious is, is how we'll, um, how will we work to make sure that we follow up with individuals who have uh, come forward to receive the first dose uh, when we might have so many different uh, fat, so many different actors involved? I'm sort of especially concerned with the sort of Walmart and and the and Walgreens and CVS pharmacy aspect of it. Um, in, in other words, will we all be talking to each other to make sure that everybody's on the same page? Yes, the uh, technology and the communication strategies are being formed by uh, DPH now. So everyone should be following the same strategy around identification and follow up with those individuals who received the first dose. So three weeks later, um, the individual will get a notification, most likely a text uh, that will tell them that it is time for them to get their second shot and they will be scheduled at that same time. So we'll keep concrete database. Um, you know, uh, Councilor Letterman, we have, this is the first time we are as a state and as a nation attempting to do something on this uh, large scale. So as much as we plan, uh, there are likely to be glitches, we hope not, but yes, everyone should have the same database so that we know that Helen Calton is in that database and um, she should, she's at CVS, so don't give her her shot at the EDS site, for example. So that level of coordination around going back to the initial provider who gives the immunization is going to be critical. And I think we're kind of still making sure we're working that out. All right. I have a couple more questions, but I'll yield to my colleagues. Commissioner, thank you so much. Mr. Chair, you're muted, sir. You got up. Uh, Councilor Davila. 
thank you, Mr. Chair. I do believe Councillor Allen um, had uh, some I, initial first. Uh, please, Councillor Allen, I didn't look at it. I just, there's only six of us, on, or five of us on here. I didn't even look at it. Um, it's fine. I defer to, to Councillor Davila. Then I'll thank go. you, Councillor Allen. Uh, Commissioner, thank you for that uh, good overview. I do have several questions. Uh, but the first one is, um, how are we going to cover this in terms of cost? Is there going to be some more uh, CARES money available? Yes, right now uh, the cost will be absorbed by the Commonwealth. And as you know, the um, package that was hopefully passed last night uh, will have additional funding for states for vaccine distribution. So I believe to the degree we can, we will build third parties, but it is not anticipate that we're billing individuals or that individuals are having to pay out of pocket. Do you uh, have a rough idea how much uh, the Commonwealth is going to contribute? I do not. Uh, again, I think additional money is going to be, right now the Commonwealth is not uh, participating or paying for vaccine administration. So the mm. vaccine itself is paid for, but the to administer the vaccine is not paid for by the Commonwealth. That is when we will bill, as we do with flu, we'll bill third party providers to get cost reimbursement uh, for that. Right now, I don't know what that reimbursement is at this point, but we are very skilled as a department, and I know that all the pharmacy are, are all the pharmacies are in billing third party. Excellent. Uh, now, Commissioner, uh, you talked about the uh, uh, five different phases that are going to be uh, followed initially, and here in Springfield, I believe you mentioned that the Springfield uh, police fire are going to be um, in front of the line getting getting the uh, the vaccine. Does that include EMS or is EMS going to have their own plan? It does include EMS. It does. Okay. Yes. Do you know rough idea how many from EMS are going to be getting vaccinated? I do not. They, I did not survey uh, the EMS providers uh, because they're not just uh, serving the city of Springfield, as you know, they're region wide. And so I was uh, pretty much just um, gathering the data on our uh, city first responders. So roughly how many... Um, how many vaccination uh, do you expect to receive on the first batch? I do not know. Uh, so I think because um, the Commonwealth, we have gotten less vaccine than we thought. Moderna, we should get within the next couple of days. We expect there's going to be more Moderna than there was Pfizer. So we right. should see an increase. We should see it going uh, faster. And so, but what's that exact number that we're going to get? That's why we're asking uh, the numbers of first responders um, and the numbers of, um, uh, yeah, first responders, fire police. So we have an idea of what we need for that quadre of individuals. Right, and uh, my final question before I yield to my colleagues, um, in terms of, uh, you identify several people, but in terms of uh, government itself, um, I do believe some of the states and the federal government are identifying key positions and uh, key elected officials to receive vaccination as well as a way to ensure continuity of government. Uh, is that something that we're planning or thinking of doing here in Springfield? Absolutely, but I also think that that's something that we're going to as a city and as a state, I think that guidance will be put out for us, Councillor. Um, okay. Also, the team that has been put together uh, by the city that will be announced, uh, our task force has several physicians on it and individuals hopefully will be able to um, guide us in, in many areas, but certainly uh, who uh, in the city government should uh, have preference as far as uh, uh, immunizations are concerned. But again, I think the state will also help us with that. Very well. And I will yield, uh, we'll loop around with uh, some more questions, uh, but I yield to my uh, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor Allen, please. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks, Helen, for being here and for all your work on this. Um, I'm curious about the, um, is there a master list? Like, like when it's, um, are you going to have a list of the people in Springfield, Mass, who are eligible for the vaccine in phase one or in phase two? Or are people 
supposed to just keep track of their own selves kind of thing. You mean the individuals in each category who yes. will be eligible? Um, yes. We do not have a list. What we will ask, obviously, is for identification. Obviously, the hospitals know uh, who's within their system, and so that's, that's the easier part. Um, the first responders will be looking at identifications and asking uh, people to identify themselves based on category. It is not known whether individuals with comorbidities will require a physician's note to say, yes, Helen has diabetes and high blood pressure, for example, so she fits into um, that category. So that process is something that we will uh, need to work out and make sure that we're uh, being effective in reaching those individuals who are highest at risk. Okay, so when it is your category, when your when your uh, number comes up, so to speak, you just there'll be some direction as to where to go to get your vaccine, as to whether it's CVS or Walgreens or whatever. And once once you get it, you'll be entered into the system, and then there'll be a notification for your second visit a month later. Yes, uh, three weeks later for Pfizer, and I believe four weeks later for Moderna. Yes. Okay, um, and uh, I, I know Councillor Davila asked about cost, the reimbursement, but is there a cost, out-of-pocket cost, when you're in the line and getting the vaccine? We will have individuals there just as we do uh, during flu season. We have our frontline staff who are there who are taking insurance information so that we can build third party. But like flu shots, we will not turn anybody away because they do not have the ability, they don't have insurance, for example. Okay, and, and the cost, the vaccine itself has been paid for, but the cost is for uh, the people who are providing the service of giving the vaccine? That's correct. The administration of the vaccine is the cost. The vaccine itself has been paid for um, by the federal government and uh, shipped to the states. Thank you, and uh, one last question. Um, so CVS and Walgreens, you actually, you mentioned Walmart. Was that, was that just, did you mean Walmart or did you mean Walgreens? It is Walgreens and CVS who are under contract. If I said Walgreens, I apologize. I have Walmart, I apologize. Okay, thank you. I'll set for now. Uh, Counselor Dabula or Letterman, either of you have any another question? Yes. I do, but I yield to uh, Council Letterman. Council Letterman, please. So, Commissioner, tell me more about the educational strategies uh, that the administration plans to employ. Especially, I think, you know, we are going to be, I'm sure, beginning to receive uh, outreach from constituents with questions about uh, the vaccine. Where should we kind of refer folks to get those answers? And what is the administration's plans for community education so that people can understand, uh, you know, the vaccine clearly and uh, be able to uh, get that information? Thank you, Councilor Letterman. That really is one of my biggest concerns is that we are getting credible information out to the community. And so uh, for individuals, what I recommend is that individuals contact uh, their primary care providers if they have comorbidities. I want individuals to feel comfortable that they are getting um, accurate information as far as the vaccine is concerned. Uh, we, again, have a task force that will come online on Monday, um, and we are working on a communication strategies. On that uh, task force are several uh, physicians, um, and uh, they are going to be prepared to receive calls if necessary. But the first line, I believe, for individuals with questions should be a trusted um, medical provider, particularly if they have comorbidities. The um, task force or the group of individuals who will come together will develop an educational strategy. For example, we're talking about Focus Springfield and having individuals who are trusted voices uh, do PSAs uh, so that they are saying to the public, uh, because they have educated themselves, this vaccine is safe. We recommend that you take it. 
and that people know the facts because again, there's a lot of misinformation uh, um, out there at this point. And, and Commissioner, where can, can we as elected officials go to, to get those facts and learn more? Well, you can go to DPH's website. Um, they have uh, lots of information there around vaccine information. But one of the challenges is as a layperson is looking at the data as it comes out and interpreting it in a way that the average person can say, you know, that makes sense. I understand now. And um, that, uh, that, uh, that is why we are going to, uh, we have this task force that will be announced. Um, so I think the website from DPH does a good job. We have additional information on our website as well. Uh, but as far as uh, speaking to an individual is concerned, I call the epidemiologists at the state lab and they always put uh, that data information up on the uh, state's website. So that's a beginning place. All right. Uh, thank you so much. And, you know, I, I just wanted to say also relative to a comment made earlier, I certainly understand and appreciate uh, the continuity of government steps that uh, might have been made at some levels. But I, I would really want to make sure that first responders and frontline workers and individuals who, you know, need to need to go to work to provide for their families outside of their home uh, get this vaccine in first order. So I'll, I'll be interested to see what that looks like. But I think it's very important. Um, I certainly am very fortunate to be able to uh, conduct my duties uh, from the safety of my home. And I want to make sure that those that are not able to do that are first in line uh, for the vaccine. Well, thank you, Councillor Letterman. You have always uh, been concerned about uh, individuals in their everyday lives and how they're making it through uh, really difficult times. So I will, um, obviously, I think all of us want to keep our eye on this vaccine, how it's being distributed, where it's being distributed geographically, because uh, we have already noticed some geographical disparity as far as vaccine distribution is concerned. So I obviously am going to lean on the city council to help me uh, make the case that we always need to fight for Western Massachusetts and making sure that there's um, equitable distribution. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Councilor Davila, do you have any <laughs> questions? For I do, I just got uh, to sort of wrap it up. Uh, commis uh, Commissioner, um, going back to the uh, vaccination, uh, do we have a timeline as to when we expect them to arrive and when we expect this uh, plan to start being roll rolling out? Thank you, Councillor. That is an excellent question. Right now, they're telling us uh, the end of March or April for general population. Is that what you're asking about when the average person uh, might be able to get their uh, vaccination? Actually, both average person and the initial phase that you were talking about with uh, frontline workers. The initial phase is going on right now. Um, so uh, Mercy Medical Center and Bay State Health has a uh, vaccine. Obviously, they do not have enough, uh, so we're uh, hopeful that they're working through uh, their front, their COVID facing, and that's those individuals who are uh, working directly with individuals who are uh, COVID positive. Uh, they're working through making sure those individuals will get uh, vaccinated first, but vaccinations are happening uh, slowly. Uh, but we anticipate again when Moderna comes online that there will be uh, we'll be able to get more individuals uh, vaccinated. But in terms of our guys in the fire department and this police department, uh, can they go to either Mercy or Bay State, or do they have to go through a, one of our contractors? Well, um, Counselor, it's not their time. So remember, this these phases are in order. So oh, that's right. September that's right. through February right. is the uh, um, this is these are the priority group, but um, they are after clinical and non-clinical healthcare uh, workers doing direct care, and that means individuals who are cleaning the rooms and you right. know who are working in housekeeping on those units. They are part of the first response that is happening right now. And then long-term care facilities will happen next. That's when we see CVS and uh, Walgreens uh, coming on board. And then after that, police and fire are third. So uh, we'll know, um, you know when we get to that third bullet, which is police and fire, 
uh, certainly, and that's why we are having conversations and planning now, putting our plans in place. We have to send our plans as a municipality or as a board of health to the state for approval, and we're in that process now. So will I be correct then if I make an educated assumption that it's going to be before March? Uh, I think for general population, oh, you're talking about for first responders. Yeah, first yeah. responders, fire yeah. and- Absolutely. I expect March. that uh, at the latest, it will be February. Okay, excellent. And uh, Commissioner, if I may, um, you did talk about the uh, uh, vaccination committee, the trusted voices, and I do like the PCA ideas. And uh, you're right, we have to disseminate accurate, uh, reliable information to the public. Um, if possible, can you uh, let us know who's going to be in that committee? And also, as a sub, sub question to that, uh, I'm just kind of curious how are we going to uh, penetrate the the resistance that there appears to be building up in the minority communities to the, to the vaccination? Well, Council, that's an excellent question. It's one we're all wrestling with. Um, but I think um, that it's important to acknowledge the, the history of um, vaccinations, particularly in communities of color, and that there is some distrust there. And how do we break through that? And we hope that it's the educational process that we're uh, putting together. The physicians, um, the three physicians that I can tell you I know are on the committee, Dr. Scaverin has a long history of working in the community. Uh, Dr. Balder has a long history of working in the community. Um, Dr. McAdoo uh, is a very trusted voice as far as the community is concerned. Uh, there are others on the committee uh, like Jose Claudio from New North Citizens Council. So we're looking, we're looking broadly at people who uh, can educate and that the community trusts to um, um, make decisions, uh, to help them make decisions. Is the clergy uh, involved in that list, Commissioner? Yes, um, I have uh, the, on my Medical Reserve Corps, and I didn't mention the Medical Reserve Corps, the head of the Medical Reserve Corps is Elsie Sanchez, uh, who is an excellent communicator. Uh, she- I know Elsie. Yes, yeah, yeah, she's very, very good. And her, and her pastor, whose name is escaping me right now, um, who uh, has the largest church in the North End. You may know who I'm referring to. Yep. Uh, he's also on the Medical Reserve Corps. He will be a part of the committee as well. Okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, my compliments, Commissioner, it seems like we have us, uh, we, we in progress or we in line to, to really tackle this forward. And uh, uh, please let me know how I can serve in the public uh, capacity or as a member of this uh, distinguished body, I can uh, help out to ensure that uh, we get vaccinated and uh, as you mentioned that we get our vaccinations in a timely fashion that we're getting equitable distribution uh, for at least public as it is public knowledge that's one of my biggest concerns that we don't get a fair share here in the city of Springfield and so I, I from the bottom of my heart I thank you for your hard work I realize you've been fantastic um, uh, during this pandemic uh, if I may just one more suggestion if you have sure. the data in front of you that'll be fine um, would you be able to tell me what um, We'll, how many cases we have so far. And if we can, as a body, be kept aware of the uh, uh, COVID-19 cases, um, it seems like we are not getting them. Um, at least I can see them, uh, but I would like to get some, if possible, real time snapshot as to what's happening. Certainly, I'm happy to do that. Um, first of all, let me back up and say thank you. Um, the city council for the city of Springfield, um, you're putting pressure to say we need more testing sites. You're using your voices um, to say, you know, we need equitable distribution is something that I'm going to continue to hope that you will do. Um, and thinking about the vaccine particularly and, and where it is and, and just making sure your voices as a council are being heard at the state level. So thank you for what you've done and what I anticipate you. you will do. Uh, each Monday, or the, it's up now, the uh, data that I have um, is put up hey, on the city's website. Uh, so you can find it there, but um, I'm happy to, if it would be, are you asking for daily uh, data? Because the daily data from last week should be up right now, and you can take a look at right. it. I don't want to create more work for you, but I, I feel, uh, I know they're on the uh, city website, and I know uh, about the uh, 
every Monday updates, uh, but sometimes we're not able to get it or for whatever reason or other duties. Um, and I, I personally feel that if we could get something as simple as um, an email, whether it be daily or weekly, uh, saying to the council members, uh, this is the snapshot for this time period. It would be, at least for me, it would be more helpful to to get a gauge. Uh, as I do have people that ask me uh, uh, here in my ward, what's going on, what is the city doing? Uh, and I wanna be able to provide as much accurate data as possible. I will do that. So what I will do is send the data report over to um, the city council office and I will ask them to forward it to each city councilor so that you have it. Um, you know, uh, so we are um, obviously still in a surge. 41% um, uh, of our cases last week were 30 and under, 31% were 31 to 50. Uh, 51 and older was 28%. That group increased by 2%, which really concerns me. When we start to see older infections in the older population, those are the individuals who will uh, wind up in our hospitals. And so um, that group, uh, we keep a close eye on uh, as far as the infections are concerned. But uh, it's pretty, the zip codes, again, I, what I'm gonna do after this call is just send the report over to uh, the city council office and ask her just to put it up. Do you, you want the cases on a daily basis? Because I, I mean, I certainly can send the number of cases every day uh, to the city council office, and then you can be updated that way if you would like. I, I, I personally would like that very much. Uh, okay. If it's not a burden on you, that would be fantastic. No, I can do that. Um, I can do that very easily. Thank you, Commissioner. And I may say, I know um, uh, you're working on this, but I am very concerned with after Christmas. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, but, uh, you know, these are, these are going to, I feel that these are going to be uh, we are in a crossroad here in terms of a community as a country and, and the world, actually. Uh, so I, I have uh, uh, high hopes uh, and uh, we're going to tackle this and we're going to survive this because we are spiritual strong. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very questions. much. Again, I appreciate your support and hope to continue to have it as we do go Absolutely. through what a surge on top of a surge. And then yeah. as we start to roll out this vaccination, uh, process. You are trusted voices as well. And so, um, you know, I, I would, I think it's important for you to educate yourselves around the vaccine to the degree you can, so that when your constituents do ask questions, you have the answers or reach out to um, individuals that you trust to give you good information. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Counselors, either of you have any closing comments or questions? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much for calling the meeting. I, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm all, I'm, I'm all set. Well, great information, though. Thank you, Helen. Well, thank you well, all. I, I, I pre appreciate your time. Thank you, um, Councillor Edwards, for your time as well. Well, I want to thank everybody. Uh, obviously, we've just thanked each other. Um, I hope to see all of you after the holiday and uh, wish God's blessing upon you all. Um, and Helen, you are, you know, we just keep beating ourselves, beating a dead horse, talking about how much we appreciate you, um, but it's sincere. Um, and the city has benefits and has for many, many years uh, from your service. So we thank you. Uh, to my colleagues, all be well. and God bless your families. Um, please, everyone, be safe and follow the protocols. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Merry thank Christmas, you. everybody. Thank you. Merry Christmas.